hello guys today I'll be discussing the topic about cell division and differentiation and there's a next topic after the topic is after uh, so after movement of materials in and out of the cell so there are two types of cell division mitosis and meiosis so mitosis and meiosis you should you shouldn't remember the whole process but you should remember some differences the mitosis is a process where cells are divided in huge numbers like one is divided into two, two is divided into four and until all they create millions of them in cells and then they also have produce cells which are identical identically same, same to their parent cell so the genetic material of the daughter cell is same to the parent cell and the half number of chromosomes uh, and they have same number of chromosomes so this literally means that these cells are same as the parent, uh, parent cell and they have the same genetic number content but this will be discussed further in human biology and then we have meiosis that cells do not replicate in huge number but uh, and also they don't have the same genetic material as their parent cell so they they usually have half number or half number of chromosomes than the parent cell which uh, these cells are mostly sex cells like our sperm cell and the egg cell and these are mostly body cell or somatic cell C and then we have differentiation. Differentiation is controlled by genes in our nucleus. When an embryo is taking uh, is under development, there is uh, th there are multiple cells produced within uh, within our embryo. Embryo consists of various number and numerous number of cells in our body, uh, in our embryo, in our embryo, and those uh, cells remain dormant until the genes which, uh, which control differentiation are found within our embryo and these genes tend to specialize the cell or the cells produced in our embryo and make them a particular cell so just for example it can become cardiac muscle it can become a skeletal muscle it can become smooth muscle it can become nerve cell it can become sperm cell it can be become our epithelial cell any cell and plants it can palisade cell so there are many things where many cells it can be converted and it is that process is known as spe uh, specialization which takes place in our uh, starting months of the big uh, of embryo being developed and then we have to talk about the ranking of uh, cell tissues and organelles all this stuff so first of all it starts with organelle organelle is a, a part of the cell with a particular function so there is this cell human cheek cell it looks like this and then this is cytoplasm so this one is an organelle this is a part which has a the, the which has a function in our body so this is an organelle and then and then the cell is a basic structure unit of living organism this is the second one so the uh, order starts from here from the smallest to the largest then the cells this cell is this basic unit of uh, this basic structure unit of living organisms like this for example nerve cell then tissues are collection of similar cells working together to perform a function so many cells just for example many nerve cells work together to form a reflex arc so that is known as tissue or a tissue is where a group of similar cells are working together to perform a solution uh, to per perform a function like this cell there are many type of this cell and there's a pal palisade tissue layer like this one more and this makes a layer tissue where its function is to maximize the amount of glucose produced by photosynthesis then we have organ is a structure in an animal or a plant body 
that it has uh, that it has a that it has a different uh, collection of different tissues working together to perform one function. There's many tissues. For example, just take heart. It has many tissues in it, which are working on pumping blood all around the body. Then we have organ system like nervous system, digestive system, where all where many organs are working together for one outcome, for a common outcome. No. And then we can rank organal cell tissues, organ and organ system in one order from smaller to largest. Then we have stem cells. There are two types of stem cells: adult stem cell and brain stem cell. Adult stem cells, these cells are found in every human being like us, and located in the bone marrow, skin, and the lining of small intestine. They lose the ability of changing the shape to other cells, and they can change into ce blood cells. Some of the blood cells. That is why our red blood cells and white blood cells are mostly um, recovered. And then we have embryo stem cells. These stem cells are found in the early stage of de development of the embryo. They have the ability to change into any cell of our body, so they can ch uh, change into any cell like it can change into nerve cell that is what happens in differentiation stem cells from embryonic stem cells are more useful than other stem cells because other stem cells uh, stem cells don't have that property of changing into of changing into of changing into many types of cell and uh, embryonic stem cell helps us to change into different cells and there are many disease, diseases which can be cured by using stem cell therapy to treat to treat patients with diseases like leukemia bone marrow transplants and chemotherapy these some of the disease which are cured or which help in treating patients by using stem cell therapy and then we have advantages and disadvantages of stem cell so first is advantage Adult stem cells have low rejection rates, which makes it useful in helping and in treating other uh, patients with different blood types. And then the current treatment options for stem cells are numerous. It allows us to, for example, embryonic stem cell uh, allows us to replace any cell. And because stem cell has regenerative properties, the potential is unlimited. It can regenerate itself, and that is what it makes it useful. That it can allow us to take up a dead cells place also then we have stem cells can cells africa in uh, enormous numbers which means they can do mitosis they can do mitosis in huge quantity and replicate themselves into different cells or the same cell they want if they want and then embryonic stem cells have shape of uh, can take shape of any cell in our body which I discussed earlier which makes it more advantageous and can be used in treating with burnt skin along the generation for example mostly we have sprays which uh, sprays which uh, spray uh, stem cells onto the uh, burnt skin and allows to regenerate the skin and then we have disadvantages embryonic stem cells can have high de rejection rates cause of uh, blood rejection which is a common problem and other stem cells have a determi determined cell type which means it cannot change into any shape and then obtaining any form of stem cell is a difficult process it takes a lot of it is costly also it is very tough to take stem cell from embryo or from bone marrow or skin it's very tough to extract stem cells and then adults have very few stem cells which again makes it disadvantageous because it cannot be used in treating patients and then the last one is current embryonic cells stem cell harvesting requires the death of an embryo which is the main point and there's another point which I didn't wrote that it there's ethical ethic, uh, ethic problems that religious problems which uh, doesn't allow them to use stem cells uh, from embryo and even this blood organ rejection and blood rejection followed by embryonic and other stem cells so this video was all about cell division and differentiation cell division con consists of mitosis and meiosis and differentiation consists of specialization taking place and differentiation taking place at our young uh, uh, and 
at the younger days at younger stages of uh, of embryo and then we have the order of all of uh, basic units of life organ and cell tissues organ and organ system then we have stem cells uh, two types adult stem cells and binding stem cells then we have advantages and disadvantages hope you like this video